you want to design art for products, you create patterns, maybe you do illustrations, you love this work and you want to become a professional surface pattern designer. But you have a big question. You don't know Adobe Illustrator and you're wondering, do I need to know Adobe Illustrator to be a surface pattern designer? This is a question that I get at least three times a week. I hear this all the time because it is rumored that you need to know Adobe Illustrator to be a surface pattern designer. So today we're going to dig into that question. I'm going to give you some answers. I'm going to give you some clarity and we're going to talk about if you need to know Adobe Illustrator to be a surface pattern designer. So this is my most asked question, probably by far. I get this all the time. Do I need to know Adobe Illustrator? And look, I started my career working in-house. I did about 10 years working in-house. And for two years, I worked at a bedding company and I used Ned Graphics, which is an industry program. I don't even know if it still exists because this was back in like 2003. And it's a program that you would pretty much only use if you worked in-house because it was very expensive to license and it just wasn't a thing that, you know, independent artists might have access to. But the two jobs I had working in-house following those, following that bedding company, I worked on a, with Adobe Illustrator and Adobe Photoshop exclusively. And I got to know both of those programs really, really well. And as I moved into my freelance career, I started doing more and more Adobe Illustrator. I personally love Adobe Illustrator. It's my favorite program for surface design because of the flexibility you have, how easy it is to move things around, to scale things. Um, there are a lot of benefits to Adobe Illustrator. I have a video where I debate this with my friend Steph Pfizer Coleman because she is a Photoshop lady. She does book illustrations and she loves her Photoshop. So we definitely have it out on Photoshop versus Illustrator. You can watch that video. I have it um, in my collections. But do you need to know Adobe Illustrator in order to be a surface pattern designer? This is the question. So the short answer is no, but like many things in this industry, of course, the real answer is it depends. <laughs> so let's break it down. You don't need to know Adobe Illustrator to be a service pattern designer. However, there are some caveats to that. This isn't carte blanche for you to like throw Illustrator in the garbage can. It does make a difference what type of designer you are, what type of style you have, and what type of clients you're looking to have. So let's break that down. So first of all, let's be practical. <laughs> what type of art do you create? Do you create art that is very textured, that is watercolor art, painted art that you've scanned in, something that has lots and lots of shades um, and, or a lot of textured work involved? If so, you probably already know that roster programs like Photoshop or Procreate are going to work better for your artwork as far as being able to manipulate it and keep it looking like what you in originally intended it to be if you're scanning it in from hand-painted work. Um, if your work is more flat, uh, if you have a sort of more simple style, potentially Adobe Illustrator might be a good program for you. So I would say that if your work is watercolor and textured, then yeah, trying to 
fit your work into Illustrator is not going to look that great. Trying to make vector work when your work has a lot of colors doing some sort of like auto trace thing, um, that isn't really going to show the true character of your design work. And you really shouldn't be trying to kind of get your work into Adobe Illustrator. You should be sticking with uh, roster programs like Photoshop and like uh, potentially like Procreate. I've talked with a number of artists who have these kind of skills and they, you know, they agree that they do not use uh, Illustrator, they only use Photoshop. So one example, you can watch the interview on my channel is Nicole Tamron. Nicole is a very successful licensed artist and her work is water. She starts with watercolor paintings that she pieces together into cre to create really beautiful licensed artwork and she does not use Illustrator, she uses Photoshop. So certainly if your work is more textural, is more, um, you know, hand painted or anything like that, Photoshop might be the solution for you or potentially something like Procreate could also work for you. Now, if your work maybe is a little bit more flat, a little bit more, um, could be made in Illustrator, but you're still creating it in something like Procreate. Um, this is something that I used to do when I first started uh, freelancing. Like I said, I knew Photoshop and Illustrator pretty much equally well. And I would sometimes just draw straight in Photoshop and it was something that could be created in Illustrator, but I just preferred to do it in Photoshop. And here's what I'll say, as someone who is I do love Illustrator, I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little biased. Um, as someone who loves Illustrator, when I go back to those old files, it's sort of frustrating. I'm like, why didn't I do this in Illustrator? <laughs> because it is easier to manipulate and change and, and do and use pieces of things and kind of remix things if it's done in Illustrator originally. So for that reason, um, you know, I do recommend if your work is a little bit more more flat and could be done in Illustrator at some point, it's not necessarily your first order of business, but at some point I do recommend learning Adobe Illustrator or a similar vector program so that you have that flexibility and you can move things around and, and make color changes just much more quickly than you can in a roster program like Photoshop. The next factor you might want to look at when we're talking about should you learn Illustrator, do you need to know Illustrator, is really the type of clients that you're hoping to find as a designer. If you're just getting into this industry, um, there are different types of clients and different type of types of clients are going to be looking for different types of file types. It's just the way it is. So think about this. If you're licensing your work, that means, you know, they're taking work that you've already created and they're using it for their products. In those cases, you, as long as you are able to export a file type that they are able to use, something that's universal like a, you know, potentially a PDF, a PSD file, um, some sort of vector file, uh, you know, like for example, Procreate, you can export a PSD file and you know, a PDF can be a vector file that still has layers that you can work with in Illustrator. So if all this like talk, tech talk is going over your head, don't worry about it. But, but what I'm trying to say is you need to have a file type that has some layers uh, that if things need to be slightly changed, in, in your work for a licensed, uh, you know, a licensing client, they have the ability to make some small changes to make sure that your work can fit onto their templates, onto their products, make those small changes, potential like slight color changes, things like that. They need to be able to work with your file, but it doesn't have to be um, an Adobe Illustrator file. Now, if you are looking to work uh, with freelance clients, it's going to depend on the client and it's definitely going to be depend on the size of the client. If small businesses are who you're working with, often 
they are not hiring a lot of designers. They don't know that much about the industry themselves. Often I get approached by companies that are, you know, just startups or they have done a little bit of, of products, but they haven't, you know, necessarily worked with a designer before or something like that. And in that case, I can kind of steer the conversation. So you might be in a position where you can say, okay, well, I usually, um, you know, provide PDF files or I usually provide PSD files or I usually do whatever you usually do, whatever you have the ability to do, let's say. So you don't have to have those illustrator files. Now, if you're freelancing for bigger companies that their standard procedure is, you know, Adobe Illustrator, then of course you're going to have, to, that is, that's just, you know, if you don't know Illustrator, then you won't be able to work with those companies. But not all companies um, need Adobe Illustrator. Um, I do a lot of freelance work and of course I do know Adobe Illustrator. So yes, I work with a lot of companies that, that I can create things in Illustrator, but I also do freelance work for companies that, um, need things put into repeat and they're so textured and, or, or they're looking for a style that's so textured that I do the work in Photoshop and potentially I could, and sometimes I start the file in, in Procreate, right? So there are different options. Um, it depends on the company and it depends on what they're asking you for. So that is something that you can sort of approach when you get there. Now, if you are selling your work outright, potentially through a design studio, um, again, you're just going to want to make sure that you can export it in a way that it has some layered abilities to it. You don't want to be exporting like a J a flat JPEG because if you're selling your work, people want to have the ability to make changes, um, to fit it into their product or fit it into their palette or whatever they need to do. So really being able to have a layered file is what's uh, a very important, I would say a very important part of selling your surface pattern work. Obviously, if you're working with a client who is not going to be doing any manipulations because they are the small business and they're coming to you to be doing all the, the changes that need to be done, then you can export it however, however they, their printers or whatever are requiring. But if it's a bigger company that might be doing a little bit of tweaking in-house, then you need to be able to be exporting layered files. So depends on your style. It depends on what kind of clients you're going to be working with. And, um, there are other options besides Adobe Illustrator. Like I said, I've always, you know, I've worked in Photoshop and Illustrator exclusively, and they definitely are, you know, Adobe product products are the gold standard in the industry. That's for sure. Um, but it doesn't have to be Illustrator. It can be Photoshop. And if you don't have those programs again, don't get stressed out, right? I have heard Affinity Designer is a really good one. Um, I've not personally used Affinity Designer, but I guess they do have, it does have vector capabilities. It can be really, really good. Um, Procreate certainly is one that people are using more and more. Um, again, that's a roster program. It's not a vector program. So, you know, you have to just make sure that you're, you're doing your, drawing at a high DPI. So if it needs to be blown up so that the quality of the image is strong, so at least 300 DPI, but potentially larger if, if your work might get blown up slightly or shrunk down slightly or whatever needs to be manipulated. So, you know, there are other options besides Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop. Um, but being able to export a layered file that's a common file type like a pdf like a psd those type of things that is going to help you enormously in having a career in surface pattern design so as you can see you do not need to know adobe illustrator to be a surface designer but I will say it is a personal favorite. So if your work isn't super textured, if your work could be done in Adobe Illustrator, you should definitely check it out. I do love that program and it does make things easier for using your art uh, motifs over and over again in different ways and changing colors and just, you know, it does make the sort of remix vibe a little bit easier. 
If you're interested in learning more about, um, you know, the differences between Photoshop and Illustrator and why I love it, you should definitely check out the interview I do with Steph Pfizer Coleman, where we talk about the pros and the cons of Illustrator versus Photoshop. But do know that you do not need to know Illustrator to be a professional surface pattern designer. Head to elizabethsilver.com slash learn if you want more straightforward support with surface pattern design and creative business. Learn all about how to create successful licensing collections, how to build your surface pattern design business, how to quickly get a pitch out to a potential client, or how to use Adobe Bridge. And be sure to check out some targeted help I have with portfolios and my free workshop ready for surface pattern clients. There's a lot to see at elizabethsilver.com backslash learn. <music>